This is a commission piece. A friend of mine asked me if I would do a bowl for his wife's birthday. And I thought it would be nice to do a segmented piece with a pattern that had a little bit more of a personal connection than just doing a solid wood-turned bowl. So I asked if there was something that I could make into a pattern for the bowl, and he came back with an L and a dollar sign, because this is her nickname. So the L was easy enough to translate into a segmented pattern, but the dollar sign was at first seemed like a little bit more of a challenge, but I came up with a series of triangles and two cut-off rectangles that formed an abstracted dollar sign next to the L. Then I repeated the L on the other side and that gave me a symmetrical pattern that actually worked pretty well. So I started by getting the wood I was going to use ready, which was walnut for the darker wood and maple for the lighter wood. Before I got into the angled cuts I was going to do, I've been meaning for quite a while to make a handle for the table saw. The, the wheel that angles the blade is missing the little handle so it's hard to, to turn. So I turned a quick walnut handle out of a piece of scrap walnut that I had. I found there's no threading in the hand wheel but I could use a bolt to hold the handle on with a nut on the inside of the handle. So I started by working on the inside of the pattern, making the triangular pieces for the S. And the first two triangles were a little bit of a challenge to clamp, but I found if I clamp them together and then use tape to hold the tops of the triangles together, that seemed to work. Then I made the, the seamed face flush, the table saw, and then carefully jointed that face on the jointer. As this was the face I was going to glue to the cutoff rectangle that, that this piece was going to get glued to. And that went together. And that was really the hardest part of the gluing. So I trimmed up the ends on that. And then from there I could make the tails on the L, which was an easy clamp to the previous rectangle. So you can see how that pattern is coming along. Then I jointed the faces of that piece because I was going to have to glue that to itself to make a symmetrical pattern. Next I worked on the vertical parts of the L and the walnut spacer that I had between each replicating part of the pattern. You can see how it goes together now. So it was a matter of gluing all these pieces together. I worked out a system where I'd, I'd glue one joint together, clamp it, and then as that was setting up, I'd put the glue on the next piece and then open the clamps up and slide the next piece in and then clamp that together and then add glue to the next piece. So I sort of had a little system going. I didn't have all the joints to glue all at once and then trying to hold them all together all at once. And then once they were all together, I just filled it in with clamps and took it apart and it glued a little bit to the clamp with a lot of glue coming out. So I scraped that off. Then I could joint the top and bottom to that piece. Next I had to cut this piece that I had made into a bunch of little segments which would become the segments for the bowl. So I cut those at one and a half inches in length, which gave me a, a rough bowl thickness of one and a half inches. I cut out 12 as I was going to make a 12 segmented bowl, which meant a 15 degree angle on each side of these segments. So I changed jigs and cut each side at a 15 degree angle. So it makes a bunch of parts to an arch. If you think of an arch and the stones that go into an arch, that's what I was making. Except this would make a complete circle. Now in gluing this up, I'm usually not absolutely perfect with the angle so that I end up with a gap within the 360 degrees. So I'll, I'll glue half at a time and, and put a little shim in on the two halves. Once the decorative ring was glued up, I could start working on the walnut pieces that would make up the rest of the bowl. So I got those pieces ready by first cutting them to length on the radial arm saw. And then joining an edge and a face on the jointer. And then planing the opposing face on the planer to get, make the thickness the same all the way through each piece. And then cutting strips of one and a half inch width on the clip saw. Then from there, I could make 
pieces with a 15 degree angle on each side. And these varied in length for each ring so that the rings would get smaller as they go down the bowl. Now, when I cut the angle with this method on the table saw, I was lucky and the angles actually for once worked out perfectly. So I didn't have to do the, the trick where I glue half the ring up. It, it worked out complete as a circle. So I could glue it all together at once. And this saved a step. So I had to take the decorative ring and sand the two halves to make them go together perfectly and then glue them a second time into a complete ring. Then I started to think about how the rings were going to go together. And I wanted to make a bottom for the bowl. And I found it's a little easier to do this with four big pieces as I can make the, the four corners come together perfectly in the center. And I drew a circle on this bottom piece so that I could cut off the extra and cut it into a circle, which will help on the lathe. It means that there's less material to remove on the lathe. Then I sanded each ring on its face so that they would go together without any gaps between each ring. And the descender works well for this. It gives you a nice flat surface. Now in the past when I've glued up a bowl like this, I've tried to glue all the rings at once and without a jig to hold them all in place, they tend to slide around and it's really hard to hold them together nice and evenly. So this time I glued two and three rings together at a time and let those set up for about 20 minutes or so and then glued those sections together. This took a little bit longer but it was much more accurate and a lot less nerve wracking. The last piece to go on was the tenon for the chuck. And it was going to be difficult to use the clamps to clamp this in place as they don't really reach into the center of the bowl. So I mounted the bowl on the lathe and then used the tailstock to hold this tenon piece in place while the glue dried. And I checked to see whether the chuck jaws were going to fit around it. So the next morning once the glue is dry, the first thing to do was to turn that tenon down into a perfect circle so it would fit into the jaws of the chuck nicely. Then I started turning the bowl. I started on the outside to find the shape of the bowl that I had made. I know there's lots of software and there's lots of ways to get real precise with the little segments of the bowl, but I tend to just kind of cut them out and glue them together and then find the bowl that's, that's within that shape. I really just need to make sure that there's enough material there. Then I worked on the inside, and it turned out in the end that there was plenty of material there to, to make a nice shape. And I finished it up with a scraper, which gives a better surface than the gouge. Nice fluffy leaf shavings there. And I sanded. And I actually got it pretty smooth with this scraper, so I didn't have to do a whole lot of sanding on it. Then I turned off the tenon and made the bottom of the bowl. And sanded the bottom. Then I put finish on, and I used the linseed oil beeswax mix that I have. And I put it on thick at first, let it sit for about an hour, and then come back with a clean cloth and wipe off the excess and kind of rub the bowl a little bit. Then let it sit for another 12 hours or so, and then kind of rub the finish into the wood. And it makes a sort of a nice, just a little bit of gloss, but a fairly matte finish I really like. And that's how it turned out. Thanks for watching.